Good morning. Morning, and people. I hope you're well. <laughs> right, we're just going to kick off. Let's see what the market has in store for us. So, as usual, we start off uh, with the economic calendar. So, let me just bring the economic calendar up. So, the, again, the main markets we're looking at, as usual, is the euro US dollar and the dollar Canadian dollar. So we're looking for reports of high importance that could affect uh, the euro, the US dollar, uh, the Canadian dollar. So let's see. So today is Tuesday, the 18th of May. And uh, again, being in Rwanda, my time zone is GMT plus two. So uh, this is the, the times I'll be quoting uh, GMT plus two times. So today is Tuesday, 18th of June. So let's see what's coming out. So that's come and gone at 1.50 a.m. GMT plus two, the Japan GDP report, that's come and gone. Usually all the Asian reports come out in the early hours of the morning. And then we can see the first report of high importance today is at 8 a.m. this morning in an hour's time, uh, GMT plus two. The UK employment change, anything to do with unemployment is obviously of uh, high importance. And UK being the financial capital of the world, that could have an indirect impact on other markets. That's due out at eight o'clock this morning, GMT plus two. Then the big one for today, uh, especially in relation to the Euro US dollar, because it's the Euro area GDP growth rate report at 11 a.m. GMT plus two. So this would have an impact on the Euro and any currencies paired with the Euro. So hence this would affect the Euro US dollar. Obviously it would not have an impact on the USD Canadian dollar because this is a Euro area reports, so it will affect the Euro and currencies paired with the Euro. Uh, so for the Euro US dollar, we'll avoid trading this market uh, prior to 11 a.m. Uh, this morning, GMT plus two. And that's the last report of high importance today. So in Relation to the Euro US dollar, I will not start trading the Euro US dollar till 11 a.m. I will reassess the Euro US dollar prior to this report at 11 before I place my pending orders. But regarding the USD Canadian dollar, I will only wait till 8 a.m. Uh, I will not trade the USD Canadian dollar till 8 a.m. I'll wait for the UK unemployment change report and then place my pending orders just before the report at 8 for the USD Canadian dollar. So again, you have to take each currency pair on their own merit. So for the Euro, for the Euro US dollar, I wait till 11. But for the USD Canadian dollar, I'll just wait till 8 a.m because of the UK report, we could indirectly impact all other markets uh, and then place my pending orders for the USD card around eight, but wait for 11 a.m. before I place my orders on the Euro US dollar. Now, of course, in terms of how many attempts I have today, do I have just one attempt, <coughs> excuse me, do I just have one attempt uh, on each market or do I, have three attempts. Again, that would depend on you know the situation of today and the rest of the week. Uh, obviously, there are no public holidays today in the UK or the USA. But are there any other reports of uh, huge significance coming out this week that could impact my trading today? So again, as usual, you check the rest of the week. Ideally, you do this on Monday. You check the rest of the week. So let's look at the next seven days. Uh, and then tomorrow is uh, Wednesday, the 19th of May. And tomorrow we've got some big reports coming out tomorrow. <clears throat> we have the UK inflation rate report. 
the Euro area inflation rate reports, the Canadian inflation rate report, <laughs> this inflation rate report day tomorrow. But the big one and the most important report for the week and the one that could impact our trading today is the US FOMC minutes due out tomorrow evening. This is a report of huge significance and there's a high probability of the market trending sideways um, all, all week, i.e. yesterday, today, leading up to the report tomorrow, Wednesday at 8 p.m. GMT plus two. So FOMC stands for Federal Open Market Committee. That's the US, the US Federal Open Market Committee. Uh, this is the minutes of the meeting they held when they made the interest rate decision in the US. I've got a frog in my throat, sorry. So when the US interest rate decision was announced, uh, obviously at the time the US interest rate decision was announced, you would just hear that they either maintain the interest rate, cut the interest rate or increase the interest rate, but you don't know the decision behind that you know, behind that meeting they had to decide the interest rate. So this is when the minutes of that meeting comes out. And the minutes of the, the minutes of the meeting gives you an insight to what they were thinking when they made that interest rate decision. And that gives you also an idea of what might happen in the future. So this is a report of huge importance. Obviously, it's the United States so is going to have a huge impact on the global financial markets like I said, had to do with the interest rate decision. So because of that, uh, like I said, there'll be high probability of the markets just trending sideways uh, this week leading up to Wednesday. So yesterday you had to be careful trading, just have one attempt. Uh, today too, that's what we're going to do because of the report coming out tomorrow, this huge report coming out tomorrow evening. I'm just going to have one attempt at the market, one attempt on the Euro US dollar, one attempt on the uh, USD card, and that's it in view of this huge report coming out tomorrow evening. So that's the main report for this week. Uh, the rest of the week, uh, there's nothing, obviously there are other reports of high importance, but nothing major for the rest of the week, like uh, the one coming out tomorrow, the US, uh, FOMC minutes. So again, just a reminder why it's important to check the rest of the week. And it's usually reports to do with interest rates uh, that can have a huge impact. Interest rates and obviously the US unemployment rate. Those are the ones you're actually looking out for. So market watch, again, just to see if there's anything going on that could cause uncertainty uh, in the markets. Um, obviously, we know about the rising tension uh, in the Middle East uh, with Palestinians and the Israelis and uh, the uh, attack on each other. Uh, obviously, they're always fighting with, with, with each other, but obviously the fight now seems to be escalating. Um, US is now wanting uh, them to cease fire um, so one has to watch that space. It hasn't reached the stage yet now when it's going to create uncertainty, but one has to be aware because if, if that gets out of hand and, you know, fighting escalates and other countries get involved and it now becomes a huge political thing and, you know, troops are having to be uh, deployed and NATO gets involved and Russia and China and everybody just starts getting involved. Uh, that could really spin out of control and <clears throat> really create uncertainty in the global market. So that's one news incident that one needs to keep an eye on, because, like I said, if it if it gets out of hand, uh, it could really create uncertainty in the markets. Uh, but we, you know, so it's it's one that you need to uh, watch that space. You have to watch that space. So other than that, uh, there's nothing else that could potential, potentially cause uncertainty in the markets for now, in terms of currency trading, of course. Uh, as usual with the stock market, there's always something that creates chaos in the stock market on a daily basis. 
uh, but like I said, for the currency trading, it tends to be global financial issues that could cause problems with trading currencies. Okay, so uh, in view of looking at the economic calendar today and uh, the financial news and holidays, uh, we know we're fine to trade today, but we're only going to have one attempt today in view of the report of high importance coming out tomorrow evening. And for the uh, USD card, I'll have my first and only attempt around 8 a.m. this morning, just before the UK employment chain. And then for the Euro US dollar, I will have my one and only attempt around 11 a.m. when the Euro area GDP growth rate report comes out. So let's look at the charts. So we'll start with the swing trading. So I'll go to the daily time frame. Uh, this is we we'll start with the Euro US dollar. So we we'll start with the Euro US dollar, the daily time frame D1 uh, for the swing trade. I'm currently in a live swing trade for the Euro US dollar. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, the, the, the swing trade started on the 13th of April when the market broke the moving average, took my pending buy order at the time with a 100 pip stop loss. And I usually wait for the market to move 100 pips in my direction before I start moving my stop loss with the moving average. That happened on the 19th of April. So since the 19th of April, I just moved my stop loss with the moving average every day. So today, the moving average 50 today is 1.1975. So I'm just going to move my stop loss to two pips below that at 1.1973. So I'll adjust my stop loss to 1973. <coughs> so that's it. So again, you can see there, my entry level was 1.1941. That was my entry level. Let me bring up the calculator. So my entry level was 1.1941. And now at a stop loss of 1.1973. So 1973 minus my entry level, one nine. For one, so that's 32 pips. So if the market reverses today and takes me out, at least it will take me out with a profit of 32 pips as of today. So that's the swing trade for Euro US dollar. And let me go to the day trade, five minute time frame. So looking at the five minute time frame, uh, we can see, let's start from here. You can see where initially the market went up and then all of a sudden reverse back down from the low, a high, a low, a high, and then it stopped forming lower lows and lower highs, went sideways. And then you can see it's just really not had any clear pattern since then. Uh, I'll just take all this as a sideways trend. So let me just look for the highest point. That would be 2169. And that's high. Okay, and take that as the low point. So that's two, one, three, four. Okay, there we are. So just take all that as a sideways trend because. It's just had an unclear pattern. And it's always good to err on the safe side. All this area looks like a bit of area of uncertainty. So I just want to avoid all that. And we can see that the pivot point is clearly within the sideways trend. Uh, R1 is outside the sideways trend and the S12 is outside the sideways trend. But of course, the view of the report coming out at 11 a.m. GMT plus two, I'm not going to place any pending orders now. I'm just going to leave the market alone and reassess again just before the report at 11 a.m. 
and decide then where to place my pending orders. And of course, I'll post that on the platform then. So let's look at USD CAD, <coughs> excuse me. So we'll start with the swing trade too with USD CAD. We'll start from the daily time frame D1. And you can see that market is really extremely bearish, just been falling, <laughs> USD CAD. So today, the moving average 100 today is 1.2535. So I'll round that up to 1.2535. So I'm just going to adjust my pending buy order to just two pips above the moving average 100 today. So if it's 1.2535, two pips above that is 1.2537. So I'll just above, adjust my pending order to 2537. And my stop loss 100 pips stop loss. So that'll be 2437. And that's it for my swing trade for the USD CAD, and then drop to the five minute time frame for swing for day trading. Uh, so you can see this extremely bearish market. Uh, initially trending down, went sideways, it's now trending down again, forming lower lows, and then now you can see it's going sideways. So it's just hovering, hovering along S1. So it's just trending sideways along S1. Uh, so again, I have to wait for the report at eight o'clock, GMT plus two, the UK report. Uh, but the market is still hovering around S1 then. The only opportunity I will have then is to buy above the pivot point. And of course, there are no sell opportunities because I can't use S2 to trade. So at the moment, the only potential opportunity to trade on the USD card is a buy just above the pivot point. But again, I'll reassess that just before the report at eight and decide where to place my pending order. Okay, so that's it. Any questions? If you have any questions, you can either send your question through the chat box or you can raise your hand. I'll have to get coffee shortly to, <laughs> to get my lubricate my throat. Any questions? Oh, I've been bala. Morning. Morning. Um, I have a question. Um, it was on a um, a trade. I think it was last Tuesday. Um, you traded. Um, you traded um, between um, R one and S one, but the um, the market was actually moving between R one and the pivot point. Um, and I thought that you would place a buy. Um, sorry, a cell uh, just below the pivot point, but you actually placed the cell just below S1. Last week, Tuesday. I think it was last Tuesday. Let's see. Luckily, we can use the recording from last week's session as a bookmark <laughs> since, <laughs> since we do the live sessions on Tuesday. This was... Uh, I think it was the 11th. 11th. Oh, it's okay. This was a Wednesday session. Let's see, 11th. Okay. Okay. So this is when the day started. Uh, let's see. So let's see. Euro, US dollar or... US Euro, US. Okay, let's see. So this is how the day started. Let's start from the beginning. Of, oh, okay, let's start from here. So this was assessing the Euro USD, the Euro area and German economic sentiment was due out shortly at 11 a.m. Looking at the five minute chart, the market has broken the sideways trend and now gone up. I have now placed a pending buy order just above R1. Okay, all right, let's look at this chart. So you can see at this time here, where the market had broken the, the sideways trend, yeah? Yeah. And it was now going up. But don't forget, the moving average is still here. So the moving average is below the pivot point. So the only 
opportunity I have at the moment is to buy above R1, but I can't sell below the pivot point because at that moment, the moving average is below the pivot point. Remember your sell order has to be somewhere below the moving average. So at this point in time, um, I can't sell it below the pivot point. It has to be below the moving average. But if you see what happens later, because I remember the moving average then moved. Yeah, so you can see here now. So like I said, uh, assessing the Euro US five, the market has not broken R1. And like I said, the moving average 50 is now above the pivot point. So I have now moved my pending sell order from just below S1 to just below the pivot point. So now that the moving average has now moved above the pivot point, I then moved my sell order from below S1 to below the pivot. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, but don't forget, um, uh, at the time, you could have still popped a question in the comment box for me to ask, answer the question. Uh, I think that's just a reminder for everyone that, you know, if you do have a question in any of my posts, uh, feel free to put a comment or ask a question on the platform. Uh, because luckily, we had the recording today to <laughs> bookmark the post, but sometimes it's difficult to find the the thing you're talking about, obviously there's a lot of posts on the platform. Uh, so yeah, just as just a reminder for everyone that, you know, feel free to pop questions, comments on any of my posts so that that way I can address the particular question or comment in relation to that particular post. Uh, because sometimes it might be difficult to find the post a week later uh, because of the number of posts I <laughs> I put uh, the more post I, I uh, place on the platform. Uh, Thank thanks you for the technology. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Abimola. Yeah. Although the other, yeah, the other thing too is that if you forget, you can note the date just like Abimola did. You at least remember the date because yeah, sometimes if you remember the date, that that's helpful. So that that way you could just go. And if you put your cursor, I think. Uh, If you put your cursor over the where it says posted three days ago, if you put your cursor over that, it will give you the exact date and time that that post was uh, made. So you can see this one says Friday, 14th of May at 4.28 p.m. Uh, so that's another day to find out the, the date of the post and the time of the post. Uh, uh, but again, like I said, it's much easier if you just pop a comment on a question there at the time. So then that way we don't have to go searching for the post later. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions, comments before breakfast? And before my Rwandan coffee, I need to go and get some. Question. Um, one more question. There was a yes. question. I don't know if Bola has already asked this question, but if you are in a trade, okay, um, and you're trading, say at fifty p per pip, yes, can you, if you're in the live trade, can you increase? No, uh, no, you can't. No, once you're once you're in a live trade, you cannot adjust. There, there are two things you cannot adjust once you're in a live trade. Uh, you cannot adjust, obviously, your entry level, <laughs> and you cannot adjust your contract size. You cannot adjust, you know. So if you start a trade with 20p per pip, once that trade is live, that's it. It's 20p per pip. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, so the only time you can adjust your entry level or how much you're risking per pip is before the trade is live. Once the trade is live, the only thing you can now adjust is your stop loss, your profit limit, or where you want to exit. You can exit at any time. But once your trade is live, you cannot um, adjust your... The other thing, yes, the other thing that unfortunately you can't do with the MT4 platform, with some platforms, not the MT4, unfortunately, but with some proprietary platforms, you can adjust how much you, ex okay, let me write it down here. So 
So let's say, for example, you start a trade um, with one pound per pip or one dollar per pip. So your trade is live at one dollar per pip. Like I said, with the unfortunately with the MT4 platform, you're stuck with this one dollar per pip. Now, with some platforms, not the MT4, what you can do is that you can actually say, okay, uh, although you're doing one dollar per pip, you can say, for example, when I get to twenty pips, you want to exit half. So you can do it at fifty. You can say at fifty p per pip, you want to exit and take half of that trade away. So you can end 50 pip per pip. So maybe end with 50, 50 p times 20 pips, maybe uh, 10, yeah, 10, 10. You just take 10 pounds and you quit. And then you continue with the rest of the, with half of that. So you can actually adjust your stop loss and profit limit and split that one pound per pip on some other platforms. So that's what some traders do. They can start off with one pound per pip. They can say at 20 pips, they will exit with 0 0.2 pips. And maybe at 30, they exit with another 0 0.2. At 40, they exit with another 0 0.2. So some traders can play around with it like that. But unfortunately, you can't do that with the MT4 platform. If you want to do that with the MT4 platform, unfortunately, you have to do it manually whereby, for example, you, you want to risk one pound per pip. You've already decided you're going to do one pound per pip on Euro US dollar. But instead of just starting with one pound per pip, you can then split it up into five trades with the same Euro US dollar, same entry point. So you can say, for example, you're going to enter at 1.4179, that's your entry level. But instead of just doing one trade at the entry level of 1.14, seven nine you will just do five trades at 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 1 2 3 4 0 0.2 so you can do 0 0.2 per pip do five trades which you all total this one pound per pip and then you can exit at different levels for each of the trades so you then have to do it manually that way so you can decide for this one, you can put an exit at 20 pips. This one, you can put an exit at 40. This one, you put an exit at 60. This one, you can let it run forever, whatever. So you can then split it into five different trades, which will still total the one pound per pip you're trying to do and exit at different levels. So that's the way you have to do that on the Euro US, oh, sorry, on the MT4 platform. But yeah, some other proprietary platforms you can start with one pound per pip and then adjust it in, within the live trade at, and exit at different levels. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> did that make sense to you, Abimbola? Yes, it did. Thank you. Oh, okay, brilliant. I have one more question. Go ahead. That's the whole aim of this session is for questions. <laughs> so keep it coming. Um, the the horizontal um, lines, the horizontal, the lines that you just used to sort of mark the highs and the lows. Yeah. How do you change the colors on that? Oh, okay. Uh, you right click, uh, go to objects list, and let me bring up one. So, hi. So if you see here on that common, yeah. 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 So you can see here style. So that's where you change the color. So let me change this to, um, it doesn't matter. Let me just change it to any color, con, con scale. Oh, that's not a very good change. It's still that like white. Like it won't let me right click. Oh, if you speak to the broker, you should be able to right click. Um, all, I, are you using a mouse? Yes. Yeah, you should be. Uh, as you can see, I can easily right click over my platform. So I can, I can get that far. But when I actually get into the to the object where it shows all the lines, including yeah. the pivot points. It, oh, no, no, you don't. You don't. No, you don't right click there. You only right click to get to your object list. 
Okay. So, so once you select the object list. Right, I've got now, that page. Yeah, so once you want to now edit these lines, obviously leave the pivot point lines alone. Once you want to edit these lines, you can either, I'll show you the two ways you can do it. You can either select the horizontal line you want to edit, like this high one, you can select it and then click on edit. Oh, okay. And then that brings up, then you come yeah. to come on and you, let me change my color now back to white. And then you can change the colors, change the levels, the parameters, and also like I do the visualization, I only want to see the white lines in the five minute time frame, and then select okay. So that's one way to do it. The other way is that you could just double click on the, on the line you want to edit. So you just double click. And then that brings up the box and you can then change the visualization, the parameters and you know, the name, uh, the, the, the thickness and then the colors, you can then do all that. So yeah, you don't, yes, because yeah, if you if you try and right click here, you're not going to get anything trying to right click here, no. Thank you, thanks. Pleasure, pleasure. Uh, yes, so the reason why I, this is just for the white lines. The reason why I changed the visualization to five minutes is you can see if I now go into my swing trade to D1, I'm not going to be seeing the white lines there obscuring my view. Uh, so that's why I always say that I just want to see my white lines in the five minute time frame. Uh, and the other reason I think in one of the sessions someone was saying that they don't like to use the white lines, like say it's optional, you don't have to draw white lines, but I use it because it makes certain things become obvious. So you can see now that I've drawn the white line, it's pretty obvious the market has now formed a market resistance. So sometimes by drawing the white line, it just makes something pop out clearly. So you can see clearly there were the markets from the high there, hit it there, fell back down, hit it again, fell back down. So this is now market resistance. So by having my white line there, it, it makes that pretty obvious. But obviously you need to confirm. So you can see that high there is 1.21686, that's 69. That's 2168. That's 2168, that's 2168. So you can see they are all virtually within plus or minus two of each other. So that's a perfect market resistance. And obviously you can see here, the market support hasn't formed. So apart from making my sideways trend clear and knowing what's within the sideways trend, it also helps me determine if a market resistance or market support has formed. So that's why I tend to like to draw it. But even I, I don't draw it all the time. You can see for the Euro US card, I mean, I don't need to draw it now because it's quite tiny sideways trend. It's pretty obvious. It's just trending sideways across S1. So I won't bother drawing a white line on this one. Uh, okay, any more questions? Any more questions, comments? Awesome. Okay, so there are no more questions. I wish you all a good day. Enjoy your breakfast. I'm going to get some Rwandan coffee to sort out my throat. <laughs> so have a good day and we'll catch up on the platform.